Okay, so we're going to do some substance stuff in today, and we're going to take substance and we're going to go into Unity. Uh, we're going to use the Unity 5 import shader set, but we're going to set it up to output for the high def rendering pipeline. So let's start off with just file new. I'm going to bring in the exact same model that we have here, but at least it'll give us it'll show examples of what to do. I have a lot of these videos, like these are a lot of these videos, so this is not unusual uh, in terms of just getting it started. So I'm going to go ahead and just um, keep everything as is. Um, we can always change our shader later. We can change our sizes later. Uh, I'm not going to discard. I'm not going to save the scene. What we're going to do is I'm going to put in some basic materials. Uh, I'm going to blend between a couple materials on the legs. Uh, we'll put a couple stickers on the top and then we can add a couple of normal bump maps on here to kind of just take it a little bit further. <clears throat> so first off what we want to do is we want to bake the texture set, set uh, which is in the texture set settings. And what we're going to do is just click on bake mesh maps. This has a single material ID on it. It doesn't have any real um, Normals attached to it is a basic box. Um, it's not even a great table to use for this particular scene. So this is just setting up an object. One of the things that I will say is that we should go ahead into the ID and change this to mesh ID polygroup. It'll alleviate some of the errors that we'll get down here. Um, and then from there we can just bake the entire map. When I'll make a video of making a higher res version of this table. I'll round up the legs a little bit, taper up the edges a little bit, and then we'll bring that in to this low poly table and take it a little bit further. Maybe even add some trim pieces and separations from the where the legs are down here where I want to put some feet. So right now we're just going to get this basically set up and we can throw it into the game. So it's just going to be a quick tutorial. All right, so we're here. Everything's in there. So we made all these wonderful maps. Um, it's a very boring uh, object, so it makes a very boring set of maps. And some of the maps don't really even have data in them, which is fine. Not even worried about it. It'll give us. We'll have. We'll create more data later. So first, let's just go ahead and create a folder, which is a group, which I will designate as a specific either object or material type. And right now, since I don't know exactly which legs or tabletop I'm going to put these things. Just go ahead and call it wood for the material base. And I've downloaded some things. We'll just keep it nice. Let's give it a walnut. Why did you not go? There we go. Boop, boop. There it goes. So we're going to go ahead and it looks like the legs are more like they're taped with vinyl covering than they actually are made of wood, where the tabletop looks a little bit more appropriate. Uh, let's go here. I'm going to hit F3, F4. Yeah, F3, F1 will bring up the uh, 2D and the 3D. There's my UVs. So what I want to do is I want to start with scale. We'll scale it all together so that it stays uniform. And then I'm going to go ahead and rename this as table top. And I'm going to right click. Oh, sorry. We'll put that into wood. Let's undo this real quick. Put that into the wood folder. There we go. Rename this one. Right click. It's a rename here somewhere. Oh, yeah, it's not. Let's go ahead and change that to tabletop. All right, cool. Now I'm going to duplicate it <clears throat> because we scaled it and the legs in the tabletop will be the same. So I'm going to duplicate layer. We should duplicate the group. All right, so go down in here and say tabletop. We'll go ahead and call it legs. <clears throat> and now here I'm going to click on the walnut wood in the legs and rotate it 90 degrees. You can see that it affected the tabletop as well. So what we need to do is mask out the tabletop and then we can uh, mask out the legs. Sorry, I'm watching some soccer. <clears throat> so there's going to be some intermittent whistling probably for the fact that I'm Maybe I'm teaching y'all wrong. I doubt that though. So anyway, what we're gonna do is we're gonna mask out, uh, mask the legs, and then we can mask the tabletop. It may be a little overkill at the moment to mask both, but it, in the long run, it may save us uh, time to have to do it later. So let's start off the top. I'm gonna go ahead and input a um, black mask. I'll turn everything off. So I hide the table leg folder. Um, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go into my select my polygon. Uh, Polygon tool, 
just going to drag and drop inside the 2D side and just basically make sure I just select geometry. I don't have to be precise. And it will paint it white because that's the color we're painting right now. It's basically a tape tool. So if I hold Alt and click on the mask, left click on the color, Alt, left click, and you can see that I painted the tabletop white and the legs are black. So that means that the legs are off and the tabletop is on. So let's click back on the color. So there, our tabletop is going in this direction, but our legs are empty. So let's go ahead and back up to our table legs. And we can do basically the same thing, uh, create a black mask. And then I'm going to go into my polygon fill and I want to select the legs. Actually, I think I need to do that. I don't want to see. All right, so what we've got going on is we've got a tabletop texture with the grain going one direction, and then we've got the table legs with the grain going another direction. There's the legs going away, and there's the tabletop going away. So what I want to do now is that we want to kind of blend in some areas where there's some wear and tear. And we're going to do it manually first because that's fun, and then we'll see if we can get the generators to do some of the work for us in other areas. So what I want to do is basically I'm going to hide the tabletop that goes away, and uh, I want to focus on putting some wear and tear down here on the bottom of the legs. And I've got this wood rough that I'm going to slap into this folder here. I can slap it in the folder, I can drop it on my object, either one works, but by putting it in the folder, it directs it directly where I need to go. Okay, so first off, I'm going to go ahead and hide wood walnut. First off, I need to rotate it just like the wood walnut, so I'm holding shift to get it to lock when I rotate it in the texture size. So now that's going uh, horizontal, vertical, vertical, excuse me, AB world. So uh, I'm going to scale it down a little bit, and I'm liking what I'm seeing here. When I go back into Max or Maya and I smooth out these legs uh, with the smoothing groups, it's going to look a little better, and then I'll just need to get some tired geometry in that area. So what I'm going to do now is hide, unhide wood walnut, and there's two things we need to do. First off, we need to get the old wood texture from pushing through the walnut wood, um, even if it's just a little bit, while using a mask. And then we need to get the walnut, the wood walnut to disappear so the wood rough pops through here. Uh, since the walnut is going to be up top, it's going to get mass right off the bat. So let's go ahead and put on a white mask, which means it'll leave everything on. And I'm going to go ahead and hide rough wood. And what we're going to do here is that we're going to use a regular brushing tool. We're going to paint in the actual mask for the wood walnut layer. And I'm going to right click on it, get this little tool set here. I go over very up top. What I want to do is make sure that it's just a basic brush. I'm just going to do some basic blocking out. We'll do a little bit in 3D and then a little bit in 2D. Um, I'm using a basic shape cone uh, alpha. I don't have anything else going on. And it's going to be painting black because I'm using a white mask. So I'll right click there. And so we're just going to paint away. You can see how it reflects what it sees in 2D and in 3D. And you can overpaint other areas. So be conscientious of that. Uh, I'm going to undo both those and just get back here. Just kind of paint the details. You can see how the bus, the brush is also moving kind of orient and orientating towards the normal of the face as it would sit in 3D space, even though we're painting in the 2D texture. This software is so cool. So you can see kind of. Jiggle, jiggle. I just want to get a little bit there. So now what I can do, I show rough wood. Cool. Now it's not exactly believable in the way I wanted to see it. And I definitely can't wait to go back to the source software and soften these corners out. Um, let's go ahead and start dipping in here a little tighter. Let's, of course, I got to remember it's the floor, the bottom of the legs, they don't have to be that detailed. I may even scale this down a little bit. Let's slide this up here so we can see it more. And if I don't like this one, I can always, I have this selected. I love this. I can mess you out too. I just click on this one, changing it to rotten wood right there. Um, and if I right click on it and I have it selected, I can go into the actual material itself and change it there. And I can change the base color 
So let's change that to a more uh, orange to match a little bit more of the cherry wood a little bit. 